I'd like to now go through the concepts uh, behind Azure DNS. Now, the first concept I want to look at with you here is your uh, Azure uh, Active Directory tenant name. Uh, so a Azure Active Directory tenant, that, that is what you are called when you set up an Azure account and you have Azure AD. And uh, when you first subscribe to Azure, you get a... Uh, a, a domain name that, that has a .on Microsoft.com name on the end of it. And you can see that if you've set up a, an Azure account, you can go to the menu button here and go to Azure Active Directory, and you can see what that um, Azure AD name is. It'll say it right here. Now, in my case, I've actually already registered a custom domain name. All right, so how did I do that? Well, to do that, first off, you have to purchase a custom domain name, and you have to prove that you actually own that custom domain name. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we here we are in Azure Active Directory. If we scroll down a little bit, um, you can see an area, a blade, essentially, that is called uh, custom domain names. It's right here, so we'll go ahead and click on that. All right, and then from there, you can register that custom domain name. So when I originally, when I started my uh, Azure account, I used exam lab practice, uh, it says dc.onmicrosoft.com, and then eventually I registered the examlabpractice.com name. I verified it. Now how did I do that? So what you do is you go here and you add a custom domain name, okay? For example, if I was gonna add examlabpractice.org, which I don't actually own, but if I did, I could say add that domain name. And the next thing I would need to do is I would need to prove that I actually own that domain name. And the way that you would do that is if you registered the name through somebody like GoDaddy or Network Solutions or HostGator, whoever you have registered the DNS name through, um, it, Azure will give you a couple of different options for proving it. Number one, you can create a text record. So you can go to GoDaddy or whoever and you can create a text record with this information in it right here. Once you've done that, you can click verify and it will verify, it'll go out there and it'll check that DNS record to see if it's there. And if it's there, great, they'll let you use the name. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a text record, you can also use what's called an MX record, a mail exchange record. It's an email based record that you create through DNS and this would be the information that you'd put. Okay, obviously right now if I verify that's not going to work because I don't actually own that domain name. Okay, but that is the process for getting a custom domain name. You register it through somebody like GoDaddy or, or somebody like that, HostGator, Network Solutions, any of those different registrar-based companies, and then um, you can, they'll host the DNS for you if you want. By default, they'll host it, and then you can point Azure to that to verify it. At that point, you will be able to use that as your uh, primary domain name if you want. In this case, I'm using examlabpractice.com as my primary domain name. So if I start mixing this with like Exchange Online and all that, I can actually have email addresses that have the examlabpractice.com name on the end of it, okay? Now, the other side of this, I wanna look at the other, the other piece of this now, all right? What we can also do is we can have uh, DNS names that are going to be associated with our different resources that are sitting on vnets and subnets and all that. Uh, so let me show you about that. Now there's two approaches to this. You have what's called the private DNS zones and you have what's called public DNS zones. So let's go here uh, to the menu button and we're going to go to all services and we're just going to search the word or the acronym DNS. So you'll see there's two. You have DNS zones and private DNS zones. Okay, So private DNS zones are going to be uh, DNS names that you can have uh, internally registered to your different services, but they're not accessible from the internet. They're only accessible within the Azure uh, space itself. So if I go right here and I click on that, and I click to create, I could create, let's say, let's associate this with a resource group here, VNet Demo RG, or I could create a new one, and I'm going to call this, uh, we'll call it exam lab practice.internal. And so that would be an internal namespace. Now, granted, you can put .com, .org, .edu, all that stuff in there if you want. It can't conflict with a, a public one, but I could um, I could do that. In my case, though, if I just wanted to associate 
a bunch of names. Like maybe I'm going to have a bunch of virtual machines and I want them to be able to take that name like vm1.examlabpractice.internal. I can do that. All right. All I got to do now is just click review and create. Wait on the validation and then click create. And it's now going to create that private uh, DNS zone for me. Okay. Um, so we'll let that go ahead and create. Now what we'll do, we'll go back over here. Uh, go to the menu button, go to all services, and let's search DNS again. And this time we'll do DNS zone. Now this is a public DNS zone. Now this, in order to do a public DNS zone, you will actually have to have a public DNS name. So we'll say create DNS zone. All right. And then of course associate that with our resource group or create a new one. And it says this zone is a child of an existing zone already hosted in Azure DNS. So if it was a, a child zone, meaning it's going to be uh, maybe I've got examlabpractice.com and I'm going to create a, uh, a child zone underneath that called eastus.examlabpractice.com. I could do that, but mine is not a child zone. So let's say that we, uh, we were going to host the name um, examlabpractice.edu. Okay. Maybe that's the name I've, I've, I've purchased. So I click Review and Create, and I click Create, and it's going to go ahead now, and it's going to create that uh, zone. All right. So now we've got our public zone creating. Let's go back over and look at our uh, a private Z a DNS zone. So there is our private DNS zone right there. We can click examlabpractice.internal, and we have uh, what's called a start of authority record that just has some interval information in it. In it. And then if we wanted to create some records in DNS, we could. We could say record set. And for example, if I wanted to create a, um, a DNS uh, name for maybe a virtual machine like VM1, I could have vm1.examlabpractice.internal. Or if maybe if I had a web server or something set up that was running on a VM, I could say www.examlabpractice.internal. Uh, and then we could associate that with the VM by uh, IP address, and it would be an A record, okay? which is an alias um, host record as it's called and maybe this was the address of the uh, of the web server we'll say 10.2.1.10 maybe that's a web server that I've got running on that uh, subnet there and of course I've got the other types of DNS records that we can create quadruple A or quartet based records um, that is a for IPv6 C name records allow you to have redirecting names so I can have a name that redirects somewhere else you get an MX record is used for email. A PTR record is what we is called a pointer record. That's a reverse lookup record. It's basically IP address to name. It's kind of like caller ID on a phone number does a phone number to a name. Well, this is the reverse. An SRV record is a service record that lets you specify services as well as port numbers. It's definitely used in things like Active Directory. And then a text record, which you can put anything really into a text record, any kind of text you want. But the A record is most common. So then we would click OK. And now any internal Azure service that tries to go to www.examlabpractice.internal, um, they're going to get directed to that address. Okay, That's what this is going to do. This is not accessible from the internet. So going, you know, typing this into my browser or something right now is not going to do anything. You'd have to be like sitting on a, a connected to a VM that's sitting in Azure for it really to really to take effect. Granted, you can actually link this to an on-premise network, and on-premise network could actually get to it as well if you did that. Um, but I'm not getting into linking on-premise right now. Let's go back to our uh, resource group. And now let's uh, refresh, and we should have our public address space. So there is our public address space, examlabpractice.edu. Okay, so I can click on that. Now keep in mind, I would need to actually own this name. I would need to to own this name for real on the internet in order for this to work. And what I could do is I could register through GoDaddy or something like that. And through GoDaddy, Network Solutions, HostGator, again, any of those companies you want to register through. And then what you would do is you would log on to your site, whoever it is, GoDaddy or whoever, and you would point them to these name records. In fact, if you go out to, to Google Images, we'll do, well, let's, use, let's, use, let's use GoDaddy as an example. And we'll say GoDaddy point NS records. We'll just do a search on that and look at some of the images here. And you can see they show examples on um, actually doing that. Okay, so there you go. 
So what you would do is you'd go into GoDaddy or whoever and you would point these NS records and you would point those to these name servers right here. At that point, anytime somebody on the internet types in anything with examlabpractice.edu, it's going to point back to Azure. But you do have to you know, register it with that registrar. And at that point, I can create records. So I could... You know, I could say www.examlabpractice.edu, uh, www and then I could point to the public address. In fact, uh, kind of put two and two together, if I go back over to my uh, resource group, I've got a, a PIP, a uh, public IP address, IP address that I've set up. Here's the address. We could link this if we wanted to. Uh, we could link it to our, it, it is could be linked to our firewall, and then our firewall could redirect to a web server. Granted, I haven't shown how to set up an Azure firewall yet, but I could have Azure firewall. Anytime somebody connects to the Azure firewall's address, um, this is the address, uh, for port 80 or 443, we could have them redirected to a web server. So I could take this here, go back over into that uh, public namespace, and then I could go to record set, call it www and then paste in that address click ok now anytime if we've done all that if we've registered these name records with our registrar whoever that is godaddy or whoever anytime they type in a name uh, anytime they type in www.examlabpractice.edu or whatever it's going to get directed here to that address and then it would go to my firewall the firewall would filter and all that if you were going to port 8443, we could have the firewall forward to a particular web server that we've got running in Azure. Okay, but keep in mind, I don't really own this name, but if I if I did own it, I would be able to use these NS records to uh, to handle that. All right, and so that is how uh, you can manage the uh, the Azure DNS services within your Azure environment. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <music>